If you're interested in making a video with a 360 camera, this video could be for you. I've been asked recently a few times how I go about making videos with a 360 camera. So today I'm going to do that using the Insta360 X5. So I'll use Insta360's PC app to, or PC Studio to do that but you can probably apply the same principles to any camera. And another thing I should say is today I'm generally using the camera on a selfie stick which I hold which I think is, gives better pictures. You might want to put it on a mount on your bike which is probably a bit easier and safer. So settings wise, as it's a nice sunny day, I've got it on 8K30, which should give the best picture quality. If it was cloudy or getting darker, I'd probably put it on pure video, which is much better for low light conditions. Today I'm just going to show you how to make standard videos for example for YouTube or TV viewing something like that you can obviously produce videos that are designed for things like Instagram to make reels but today we're just sticking to landscape format 16 by 9 to create those sorts of videos So the next thing you need is some footage and then we'll go inside and look at editing. Okay, so I'm back indoors. I've got my 360 camera, the Insta360 X5 in this case. And we're gonna look at using the Insta360 Studio app on the PC. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so the first thing we've got to do obviously is take the pictures off the camera. So I plug that in and straight away it picks up um, what's been plugged in and I can import all my videos into the app straight away. Okay, so I have edited some of these already, um, ready to make this video, but what we're gonna do is look at some I haven't edited. If you double click on the left on the video, Okay, so in Insta360, what you need, like in any, um, well, any video editing app, you need to create keyframes. And down here where you can see the plus, that adds a keyframe. So obviously with a 360 camera, you've got the whole full 360 degree view. And what we need to do is just pinpoint one bit of that, uh, one section, one flat section to choose. So I need to tell the camera which section to look at. So at the moment you can see we've got the whole 360 view. So what I'm going to do is put a keyframe in there and it asks me what sort I want. I can choose which view. Mega is quite a good view I often stick to and D-Warp is where it's going to make the sides as straight as possible so it looks much more like a flat picture and you don't get any sort of fisheye uh, lens to it. But I'll put it on Mega. Okay, so then we just go on to the next bit of video and I pause it, make another keyframe and I'm gonna turn around now. So press play again and spin the video round so it's facing me and again, make another keyframe. And so now if I go back, just by clicking on the timeline down the bottom, you can see it hits that keyframe, then it starts turning around and there I am in the frame. So what I can do as well is on these um, 
lines between the keyframes, I can choose how I want it to turn. So for example, slip in, fade out means it starts turning quickly, but then it gradually turns or fade in and slip out is the opposite. So I'm going to do that. So let's see what difference that makes. So it's a slow turn and a sudden spin at the end. And then I can go on a bit and again, position where I want the video to be, make sure that's in the keyframe. Make sure maybe if I want to be that I'm central, I could change the um, picture by going to ultra or de-warp again, or mega. Um, so I'll just go to de-warp, press play again, or the space bar to get the video moving, keep moving myself to be in the middle of the video. And maybe this time will be a good time to turn around, go on a bit and choose another keyframe and so on. And I basically go through the video doing that, creating keyframes, turning where I want to. I could, if I want to, you know, focus on what I'm passing by. So this time it's going to turn and be looking more at that house and it will stay like that until I turn it back. That will give it a slower turn through that image. Okay, so that's the short 30 second section of how I would edit that video. If I don't want the rest of it, and the rest of it is I think me just, yeah, cruising down to a halt somewhere, I can drag this slider at the end, if I can, and that basically cuts off that video so the video will stop there. Same in the beginning, if I don't want that bit of me messing around with the camera, I can move that. So we're starting, if I go back, right at that bit. Okay, so another thing I can do using these um, choices or menus at the top, you can choose which stabilization and flow state, flow state stabilization is normally on by default. Um, what I tend to do quite often though, is go on that one for media processing and choose color plus that tends to make your colors a little bit more vibrant but you can change the strength of that or you can edit anything you like here i normally pretty much leave it to its own devices and leave it where it is if you want to make it look faster you can put on motion nd which is makes the sides of the image blurred so this time When I play, you can see that the image is looking blurred at the side, which gives it far more a sense of speed. So for this, maybe we could leave that on there. Another thing which is really useful is this audio settings button. And you can choose if you've got a Bluetooth mic like I was using uh, when I videoed that, you can choose to have either the Bluetooth mic uh, solely being used, or you could have the camera solely being used. I tend to, if I'm using Bluetooth, just stick with Bluetooth because you get less extraneous sounds using the Bluetooth mic. You can also, if you are talking, go on voice focus, which is an AI um, editing of your voice or of the sound, so it'll just picks out the voice. Voice focus works quite well, I found, but it can sound a little bit dead in that all you get is you speaking and it seems a bit weird not having any outside noise, but you could experiment with those. So once I've done that, I basically click export up in the top right, export that. And it's asking me where I want to export it. And I've got this set up as a, my usual parameters of 4K and the video 
um, coming off the camera. You know, I was videoing an 8K setting, but it won't be an 8K image because 8K is the whole 360. And if you take a slice of that, you're going to reduce the um, resolution by quite a bit. If you're lucky, you'll get a decent, depends which um, view you're using, mega view or um, D-warp and those sorts of things. Um, but I've set it on 4K. So if I'm lucky, it'll be around the 4K uh, resolution, probably a little bit below that, to be honest. But for YouTube and for social media, it's pretty much more than adequate. OK, so then we click start to export. And you can see in the top right task center that it's exporting that video. And if you've got a, quite a fast computer, mine's not too bad, it can render the video pretty quickly. OK, so once you've taken it off Insta360 Studio, you can just use that video and you could just upload it to YouTube. It will be a big file. If I find that file, let's just have a look how big it actually was. 407 megabytes. So 400 megabytes for a, I think it was what, 30 second video. So it takes a lot of space at 4K. If you are uploading it to other platforms or Instagram or something like that, you could reduce the resolution and end up with quite a bit of a smaller file, which might work for you. Once you've got it off the camera using the studio, you can use the video. If you want to compile video shots and make a longer video with video clips, you're going to need to use an editor like DaVinci Resolve, which is what I use. Hopefully you found that explanation fairly straightforward. It is quite complicated and there is always an extra step with 360 videos in getting the film off the camera and then making it into flat film. That's always an extra step which takes a bit more time. Having said that, of course, most of these cameras like Insta360 have an app you can use on your phone which can take pictures off and using AI edit them quite quickly without you really doing too much at all so if you want quick snaps or quick videos for social media using an app is probably the best way to go about it So I hope you found the video useful. If you've got any questions, don't forget to drop them down below and I'll try my best to answer them. And until next time, bye for now.